Only God knows how we managed to get away. And imagine the child saying, I don't want you to die, I don't want you to die, when we were leaving and walked past a dead man. Or the tank positioned outside the house. How do you imagine the children were feeling? Conflicts and disasters leave not only physical scars, but also psychological wounds. And just as a bleeding wound needs attention to heal, so do the scars on one's soul. That is why psychosocial support is a vital factor in all humanitarian work. For me, I, I think it's, it's crucial in the sense that we, I mean, I think of it as preventing further damage. I mean. By addressing emotional distress, the impact of disasters can be reduced. Psychosocial support can therefore influence attitudes to violence, speed up recovery and turn challenges into opportunities. It's just bringing people back together. It's, it's, it's the social fabric that is sometimes destroyed, at other times it's, uh, it's fragmented. And I mean, it's just bringing people back to where they were before the crisis. What is taking place in the Gaza Strip in the occupied Palestinian territories where 1.5 million people struggle to rebuild their lives with limited resources is an ongoing emergency. Due to the closure of the Gaza Strip, all movements of goods and people are restricted and no rebuilding has taken place. People have therefore not been able to move on after the military operation in January 2009 that claimed more than 1,000 lives and injured more than 5,000. The conflict continues to leave deep psychological scars. How do you imagine someone whose sister has died, whose children and grandchildren have died, who has seen their bodies dismembered in the streets while people were trying to collect their body parts? How do you imagine she will raise her children? Red Cross Red Crescent has reached thousands of people through psychosocial projects in the Gaza Strip. The support aims to improve the quality of life and to reduce the impact of the conflict. These women in Saytoun in Gaza have learnt that their children's troubled behaviour is understandable, considering what they've been through, and that the difficulties can be overcome. I mean, they're overwhelmed with grief, they're overwhelmed, they're shocked, they're in some cases traumatized. So enabling them to, to go back to, to how they were as a family entity, as a community, that's um, basically the key. And it doesn't take much. Simply sharing experiences and realizing that you're not alone can make a big difference. Groups and communities possess power and resources that individuals can never have. The 22 days of military action in January 2009 left widespread signs of psychological and social distress, also among staff and volunteers of the Palestine Red Crescent. The paramedic Jihad Salim tells how at one point during the conflict he realized he needed help. He had brought severely injured people to the hospital and afterwards washed the blood of his hands and drank coffee as if nothing had happened. Helping the helpers is vital and in fact an obligation of the Red Cross Red Crescent. We really need to take care of, of the staff and the volunteers before we, we actually think about providing services. Through a psychosocial program that helped him share his experiences with his colleagues, Jihad Salim has now learned how to live with what he saw, how to cope and how to protect himself. But that's the remarkable thing. I mean, we work with people who, who, who are thinking more about what they can do for others than what they can do for themselves. Disabled children and children with physical and emotional impairments are particularly vulnerable to emergencies. That is why Red Cross Red Crescent runs a psychosocial project with deaf children in Gaza to lift them out of their isolation. 13-year-old Najah 
tells of how angry she felt being left out. Although she saw the images on television and felt the shelling, no one told her what was going on. Najal's behavior has changed since she started coming to the sessions. They have helped breaking her silence. Now she interacts with the other children and is more sociable. I feel happy during the sessions, very happy. High unemployment rates contributes to the deterioration of people's dignity and well-being and affect men in particular because they're not able to fulfill their traditional role as breadwinners. Okay. Some of the psychological effects that we see are depressions, emotional constraint, isolation, fear of the future. At the moment we feel okay, but we are afraid that we'll be attacked again and relive the horror and terror. The men's feelings of anger in some cases leads to aggressive behavior, including domestic violence, an issue being confronted both in women's and men's group by psychosocial workers. Elsewhere, in a community center in Gaza, a group of women talks about their daily challenges, their sense of despair, fear and indignity. Two out of three adult caregivers in Gaza feel unable to meet their children's needs for care. I think it's really uh, one of the most difficult things for a parent is that you are unable to protect your own children uh, and unable to explain what's, what's happening. This is Umm Mahmoud's first time at the mother session. Yes, I'm relaxed, but my situation is difficult. I have a handicapped son who's 25 years old, and my husband is sick. The survival of communities depends on people's resilience. It is therefore crucial to actively involve people and communities in their own recovery. When parents are able to handle their own distress, it benefits both them and their children. In conflicts, time and space to play are the first things to disappear from a child's life. Helping children to establish a sense of normality in abnormal situations is essential to their recovery. Through theatre, dancing and drawing, the children of Gaza express their grief and anger. Educational activities allow them to develop positive coping mechanism. The aim is trust and tolerance and to regain confidence. The future of the community lies with these children and witnessing death and destruction has been a part of their lives for a long time. My name is Rowan and I'm nine. I'm in fifth grade in the Abu Hussein school. Rowan's life is ordinary to the extent that she goes to school every day and she likes to play. I go to my uncle's house and play and I go to my granny's house and play. What is not so ordinary about Rowan is that she does not know anything else than war and that she's sick. The closure on Gaza has had serious impact on her medical treatment, which is why psychosocial workers work together with Rowan and her family on how to cope. The girl's disease is an additional burden to the effects of the closure. The need for psychosocial support is urgent. Of course it affected us, because the chemo treatment was coming from Israel and it was delayed. And if she had received her treatment on schedule, her condition would have improved more. Although I feel very sad, I try not to show it to my family and my children because I don't want it to affect them. Like all children, Rowan has hopes for the future. I'll enter university and I'll finish university. And when I finish university, I'll be a nurse. Because I like to wear a nurse's uniform.
All over the world, the Red Cross Red Crescent strives to fulfill its aim of saving lives and changing minds. Psychosocial support is key. When embedded in humanitarian operations, it helps alleviate suffering and strengthens community resilience. When left out, psychological and social challenges may even prolong an emergency. Humanity is a fundamental principle of the Red Cross Red Crescent, born of a desire to alleviate human suffering. The provision of psychosocial support is listening to the very heartbeat of humanity. It does not take much, but to those whose lives have been shattered, it makes a world of difference.